I'm David Kelly. I'm a senior fellow at the Atlas Society and a consultant to the Atlas Shrugged movies. In these scenes from Atlas Shrugged Part 1, Hank Reardon is meeting with railroad executive Dagny Taggart when he learns of a shocking new law. Hank owns a steel mill, iron and coal mines, and other companies. But the new law says he will not be allowed to own more than one business. The man who buys his ore mines is Paul Larkin, who admires Hank, wants to be a friend, but also has ties to the same politicians who enacted the law. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Reardon, but there's an urgent call for you on line two. Hank Reardon? What? Find Mouch. What is it? The legislature just passed the Equalization of Opportunity Bill. So quickly, how is that even possible? I don't know. You know what this means? Nobody can own more than one company. We'll find a way to fix this. I'll sign away my other companies, but they are not getting my medal. What about Wyatt's Bridge? I gave my word. It'll be done on time and on budget. This is uh, just a technicality, Hank. Okay. I'll always consider the ore mine as yours. No. I either own the property or I don't. You can trust me. You know you'll always have as much ore as you need. I don't know. I've never given you any reason Look, to mistrust oh. me. The mine is yours. If you intend to keep your word, then keep it. If you want to give me first call on the ore produced, fine. If you intend to double cross me, so be it. It's not fair, Hank. It wasn't me who passed the law. To make Reardon metal, Hank needs iron ore, coal, and other raw materials. So he needs to figure out how to get them. And not just how to get them, but how to get them reliably, when he needs them, in the quantity and quality he needs. Otherwise, he can't make his metal. One way to get something is to make it yourself. Hank's strategy for getting iron ore and other materials has been to build or buy companies in those fields. He owns ore mines and coal mines, or he did until the Equalization of Opportunity Bill came along. When Hank owned his ore mine, he knew he could get the ore he needed. He could make sure that the ore was being mined fast enough for his needs and that it went to him, not someone else. But after the forced sale to Larkin, he's not in the same position. Larkin will now run the mines. Larkin will decide who gets the ore. That means Hank doesn't know that he'll be able to keep producing his ridden metal. His problem illustrates something important about property rights. Property isn't just the result of action, the wealth that comes from profit and income. It is also a means of action. When you own something, you can use it at will, and that often means you can do things you couldn't do otherwise. We all understand this about personal property. My glasses, for example, are a pretty important piece of property for me. Without them, I can't read. If I didn't own them, I might have to look for new ones every day, hoping to find someone who would loan me a pair. Because I own them, I can rely on having them tomorrow and the next day and so on. Now, does this mean that Hank has to own every business he relies on? Of course not. In the novel, Hank isn't worried about having to sell his coal mines to the successful coal producer, Ken Daniger. He even tells Ken he wishes there was someone like him in the ore business to buy his ore mines. He knows Ken is a reliable, coal producer. But to rely on a trading partner, you need two things. First, that the person be willing and able to meet your needs. If he's not willing or you can't agree on a deal, he won't do it. And if he's not able, he won't meet your needs even if he wants to. And second, you have to know it. You have to evaluate his performance and be confident that he'll continue to keep his commitments in the future. 
In either case, whether you're producing for yourself or trading with others, you need to be able to act on your judgment. Hank's business is as much an exercise of rational thought as the work of a scientist or a scholar. Individual rights protect your ability to act on your judgment. Property rights enable a producer like Hank to have control over the physical materials he needs and thus to make rational, long-range plans to keep his mills rolling. Contract rights give producers a way to coordinate with other people for the use of their resources, as Hank is happy to do with Ken. But if Paul Larkin can't get iron out of the ground, there's no reason for Hank to make a contract with him. But now the law forces him to do so. The law prevented Hank from following his judgment about how to produce steel. It's the equivalent of censorship that prevents scientists and scholars from publishing their ideas.